This is Cult Film Face Off. Hello, hello there, and welcome to Cult Film Face Off, episode 40. In this week's show, it's a three film throwdown from the full moon staple of low budget straight to VHS features. We are talking Dollman versus Demonic Toys versus Dollman versus Demonic <laughs> Toys. <laughs> so let's cut to the chase and kick things off with Dollman. A pint sized intergalactic policeman finds himself forced to land on planet Earth where he faces off against his old nemesis along with a deadly local gang of hoods, Dollman. On the planet Arcturus, he's the toughest cop around. That's a Kroger blast! So, Dole Man, directed by Albert Pion. <laughs> have you seen it? No, we know you haven't seen it. No, I haven't. Se- I hadn't seen any of these films. I knew of Dole Man because I can't remember. It was a VHS that I used to watch religiously, so I think it might have been Total Recall. But had the, the trailer. The Dole Man had the yeah. trailer, and I. It always looks so grubby and illicit. It looked like the kind of thing that maybe the people who owned the video shop had snuck on there <laughs> as one of their own films. Um, and it. And I always was fascinated by the fact that they stole the Robocop theme for for the trailer and I thought did they do that is this just something someone's just done this on is the slide is a complete lift yeah exactly I don't know did they pay the rights to that music it always seems because it seems like such a, it's such an it's a, there are ugly films and then there's Dolman I mean Dolman looks literally like piss At the big, they, they do some sort of sandblasting technique when they're on the uh, the other planet and it looks like you're looking at it through a urinal or something yeah, yeah, yeah it's quite an unforgiving brown sepia tone. yeah it's horrible it's a horrible looking film although uh, I saw the remastered trailer apparently there's a blu-ray out of this now I watched them on DVD which is uh, they're ugly as sin but I saw the, re- the tr- remastered trailer I was like wow it actually looks kind of watchable and kind of they've done an amazing job on the remaster they've gone a bit overboard on the colorization but mm-hmm. it actually looks okay which i didn't think was possible because it's such a it, shit it's so shit to begin with yeah so. it looks so awful i thought there was no I, th- I don't i didn't think you could make this film look decent but they've done that apparently i'm, I'm kind of gutted i didn't see it that way yeah i saw it on v- i saw it on vhs quality yeah uh, as well Standard. um so yeah so what did you so what did you think of Dolphin? When it started, I'd say the first ten minutes, there were a little. I was looking for good things. I suppose the matte paintings of this alien planet at the beginning, mm. they were okay. They looked like professionally done and everything. Um, and there's little tiny little moments of wit at the beginning, like when he's in that hostage situation at the beginning. He basically causes when he's in pursuit of Leo Sayer. <laughs> who's Leo Sayer? He's the guy that's got the uh, that Rick Bardot apprehends, who's holding up, who's got a, who's got um, a severe hatred of fat people. That's right. Okay, but did he look like Leo Sayer? Yeah, but, um, doppelganger. It's not even a shit looking like. It's just like Leo so Sayer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, in that situation where he's he's uh, he's roped himself to those fat people, yeah. Rick Bardo, like basically, was it Brick Bardo? Or no, Brick. Sorry, Brick Bardo. Yeah, Brick Bardo. Yeah. Um, he basically causes one of these fat women to faint by describing. What will happen if he shoots them, and then they pass out, and then he's apprehended. This, this, this is post him coming in, and pretending to do his laundry. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> but this, I thought that's quite a funny idea. Although it's so, PM stages it so badly, I had to rewind it because it just it's a, it, it locks a close up on the guy's face. And he yeah. goes, uh, uh, and you have to kind of decipher what's happening yourself. Um, I also really like the idea of a guy constantly meeting his nemesis and every time he meets him blowing another part of his body until all that's left is a head. Yeah. I thought that's a really, really yeah. nice idea. Yeah, and um, I like that. It's like taking the Monty Python Dark Knight to another yeah, level. Yeah, really. Really good idea. And also, 
the, the, introducing this ridiculously overpowered gun he has. And, and then, then this is the, the more's the pity though, because like that's the bit you remember from the trailers. It's like when he starts firing off that fucking gun, you're like, oh my god, could potentially the whole film be him just doing that to people, <laughs> yeah, right. which would have been Amazing. an infinitely better film. Yeah, no doubt. But it's but it's a clever idea. Here's a superpowered gun. Oh, it, we're on Earth. It still has the effect of a regular gun would here. So I thought that was quite a neat. That that this is about as good. Those things uh, occur in the first few minutes. It, I mean, it just, it's, it's, a, it's an absolutely... T- it, Rod, he, he, he's sort of from the Roger Corman school in that he gets a budget with a concept and then he has to make a film. Um, so it's utterly aimless and it just it, it's one of those aimless films I've ever seen in my life. It's camp and aimless. Yeah. I mean, it's so camp. Um, yeah, the South Bronx is a really fucking horrible place, yeah, isn't it? Not, it's not a fucking hovel. Yeah, it's a terrible... I mean, yeah, they, they certainly set it in the right place. Although, when they do the first montage, it looks like there were loads of... Uh, they were adjusting the camera. It's so badly filmed, some of it. I mean, it looks like it was filmed in... It, it, they used footage that anyone else would fucking cut out. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. I mean, everything... I mean, every, this, this is done on a minuscule budget. And uh, the, the, con- the conceit, the whole thing about, basically... You have got an intergalactic cop who who has to go to Earth, and then he's basically shrunk down to you know thirteen inches. Basically, yeah. it's actually a concept that if you mind, there's a lot of gags in there. Yeah, really. Yeah. But the concept doesn't work. You know, he spends way too much time in his little shit. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. And you know, with kids picking him up and rattling him around, he doesn't actually spend much time out and about, kind of with action. You know, coming you know coming up against like say animals, like normal sized dogs or cats yeah, yeah, or right. all the stuff that you could mind some kind of action or some comedy out of it, it just doesn't happen no um, it, I mean nothing happens the problem with this film is that it's it's like Cyborg which Albert Pian also ooh. directed in that they, they, there's enough footage there to make a convincing trailer a persuasive trailer and this is basically two mediocre action scenes and 17 minutes of fucking drep a in chat. the middle. And there's, there's a moment where there's a conversation about um, the mother, the central character, being worried that her son's going to drift into a gang. And you think, oh, is that going to happen? No, they drop it. Yeah. Then she's trying to get people to join her neighbourhood watch. Is that... No, yeah. it's, just, it's just spinning wheels. Yeah. It, and also... When we spoke about Cyborg, I, I made a film for our YouTube channel called Cyborg Stare Down, in which I take yeah. all of the pregnant pauses from the film and put them on YouTube. Um, and Pine does the same thing here. He just constantly wastes time because all you're trying to do is fill out enough time so that it's acceptable. For there, you to I mean, there, the there, there is so much filler. I mean, it's uh, all filler. Uh, well, there's all filler, but I mean, none so brazenly, um, in, you know, so brazen as the montage in the last five minutes of the film is a oh, montage yeah. of the entire film that you just seen. Right. Yeah, just yeah. to plug in the last five six minutes of runtime yeah, to shocking. get it to like an hour and twenty, just you know, just above an hour, over an hour and twenty. Yeah, I mean, and there's actually a really great shot in this, which I really found funny, where Pi- Pian is trying to waste time again, and there's a shot of Jackie L. Haley and one of his henchmen in the car, yeah. and they say they're one line each or something, and then you can just see they're still in character, but they're waiting for him to cut, <laughs> so they're just kind of looking <laughs> around like, oh, when's this shot looking going uncomfortable? Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> but he has to just grind it out, so there's enough time. That, this, that's what this studio did. Yeah. They filmed a couple of action scenes and then had to fill in the fucking yeah. gaps with something, and it was always shit by the looks of it. Yeah. Was, was there anything that, that stuck out that made you laugh at all? Uh, no. There, there, there's one bit that made me laugh. Uh, we, when we do the video, you have to you have to, uh, to keep an eye out for it. It's uh, it's basically one of the gang members is, is trying to douse her in fl- flammable liquid, oh, but right. he's just not. He, he's literally going it around. <laughs> he's just, he's just, it's like the worst job of someone being doused in flammable liquid I've ever seen. And that made me laugh. Okay, actually, thinking about it, at the beginning, when you see these uh, futuristic uh, alien... Poli- well, no, they're aliens. It's, they're all humans, but... The police, they're all wearing like military helmets, and because they obviously didn't have the budget for uh, some guy's got like a, a, a paper label with police written on it on his helmet, and everyone else doesn't. And then occasionally you'll see another one of these labels in the background. So, like, two guys well, are, they have, re- are they reusing the maybe same label? Maybe you can never see the two lab- the labels in the same shot. <laughs> so, yeah, they just palmed out their one police label and stuck it on someone else. I mean, this is just a really inept, it's inept, it's boring, it's pointless. I mean, this, they, I have no real tolerance for films like this because what they're trying to do is con you into thinking that there's a film there and there isn't there's oh, two no, action scenes and... it's a complete money spinner and it's completely empty this, this was the conceit itself yeah. it, it could be funny yeah. if, if, if executed well but they're not interested he's not interested in executing a film well no they're interested it, it's, it's, it feels long as well and it's not no, it's... <laughs> this is barely you know over an hour and 20 minutes but yeah. it just it's slogging for as soon as that scene uh, in the beginning is done with him shooting everybody and blowing everybody up 
Yeah. Then it just fucking it coasts. Yeah, I know, big time. And it's the whole thing's basically set on either a building site or in a dilapidated building, like yeah. fucking Nemesis. Like was. Nemesis. Yeah. Um, that's his mo. And it, that's what he does. Yeah. But you can't even admire the sort of ingenuity of how it was made. You know, normally films like this, they're constantly trying to. Mm. I think there's two or three shots where Thomason shares a shot with someone that's not his size, and it looks fucking baloney anyway. Yeah. Well, they're, 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 yeah, there are moments there when when there there are like normal sized bricks and, and rocks in the background. It's yeah, like right. fuck's sake, you don't even bothered to make that look. It's and then there's the awesome convinced. the awesome shot where they they basically sellotape what's probably a Ken doll on the side of a car like he's holding oh, on yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's this yeah. I I can't I can't. It's a funny choice. I mean you know Rick Bardo is a funny choice because he's he's, he's he's a guy that's not particularly young. He's a guy that's not particularly like he you could kind of glance at him and think it could be Leslie Nielsen. <laughs> you know? And he's got these really high trousers. That's very true. Yeah. Really high like you know give Simon Cowell a run for his money <laughs> yeah, in the trousers right. department. Yeah. Uh, yeah, anything else to say about Dolman Man before we go on to demonic toys? Uh, no, it was it was it's a really terrible film. I have no tolerance for this. Um, yeah, it's just a, just a con job of a film. On to the next. Yeah. So next up is Demonic Toys from 1992. A pregnant policewoman and a delivery boy become trapped in a haunted toy warehouse. Demonic Toys. For 66 years, <laughs> evil has been waiting. Watching, wanting, for someone to play with its toys. Gotta have a lot of fun here tonight, friend. Get back! It's the toys. Someone's inside the toys. Right. <laughs> what do you want? Oopsie Daisy. Before the night is through, I'll be born in a human body, flesh and blood. Demonic Toy. Playtime has begun. Demonic Toys? Yes. Have you seen it? I had never seen it again. I'd seen, I think I'd seen reviews of it in magazines when I was a kid. I was, I was familiar with the cover yeah. art. I never, uh, I never. Yeah, I was familiar it. with the cover art. I always wanted to rent it, but, but never got round to renting it when I was a kid. Um, yeah. So, Demonic Toys, yeah, so it, it starts off with the most unlikely pair of arms dealers you've ever seen yeah, like, really in a God. film. Yeah. One resembles a cross between Bruce Dern and a young Donald Trump. <laughs> uh, and the kind of lines they come out with as well, I mean, they, kind of, they come out of lines like, whatever floats your boat, and yeah. clean as a baby's butter. Yeah, yeah, right. Rubbish. Cheap. Yeah. This film is cheap as hell. Yeah. It's populated with pretty repugnant, nasty fucking arseholes as characters. Um, and that's including the toys themselves. It's odd this because the writer of this film, David Gaynor, David, David Goyne, he wrote, yeah. he wrote David Goyner, Blade Two, Trinity, um, Blade Two and Trinity, Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, yeah. Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice. Yeah. Just what? And yeah. he wrote this. Yeah, it's what weird. on the back of a fag pack. Oh well, yeah, it's really weird. I, I, to, to be honest, at the very beginning, there, there's a conversation between a couple about uh, an impending birth of a child, and I thought, having just watched Dole Man, I literally watched those back to back. Having literally, I thought, is this just a conversation that doesn't mean anything? But then, I, I, when I remembered that David S. Goyer's name was in the credits, I was like, is this going to have some kind of relevance to the story? And it kind of does, sort of. It kind of comes back round. Well, birth and childbirth yeah, and rebirth I mean, is of, in there. I mean, I, I'm grasping at straws, but it just, in terms of it as a script, it's a slight fraction above Dull Man, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's very slight. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, it does. There, there is something going on. I mean, it's, again, it's so time wasty. It's just one of those films where, I mean, essentially, what it's essentially the first scene I was like this is this first scene has been going on for about 20 minutes I was like oh it's the whole, the whole film was basically one scene the whole thing doesn't stop it's just this whole fucking just tedious people creeping around at what's a massive warehouse or something I mean yeah. I mean this this film is, is, is utterly charmless it's kind of like um, it has elements of 
of of the Puppet Master films, obviously with the animatronics of small toys that are being small evil toys, and a bit a bit of Rosemary's Baby is smashed in there as well. Yeah. But it's utterly charmless. It's really derivative. It's really unimaginative. The actors look pretty uncomfortable in a lot of sequences. Yeah. You know, um, you don't ever you don't ever feel that there's any real danger here. Um, I mean, you know, it's so when a puppet is kind of launched itself at somebody, and 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 you can tell that they're holding the puppet on themselves. Yeah, 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 you just right. go, it's so fucking daft. Yeah, it's shit. Um, and the runaway looks remarkably fresh faced for kipping in an air duct for two nights. <laughs> yeah, that's very <true. laughs> true. It um, features the world's smallest lock picking knife. Who has that? Um, the uh, arms dealer who spends three quarters of the film. Oh, yeah, he manages to whip like, out this little so, knife. Oh, yeah. I've got my old three inch pocket knife. <laughs> that'll work a doozy. Um, well, it, it's an, what annoys me about it is that it doesn't ebb and flow. It, it, it's there's no it's not there's not significant revelations or events to break it up. It's just basically one long scene that you just kind of I was just waiting for it to end. And in terms of even bothering to come up with a reason for these demonic toys to have been resurrected, a man passes out in a beam of light. Apparently that's what happens, and then they, <laughs> there's some sort of summoning going on. Well, yeah, I mean. <sighs> Also, they had the you know the the, the vessel of the demonic uh, of the demonic force was a young child who could not lip sync for toffee. What are you talking about? The kid with the, the... The, the before the demon shows his actual like appearance, he's he's voiced in a like an eleven year old you know eleven year old is the is the demon. Yeah, and he's got like a demonic voice. Yeah. I thought he was amazing. I, I was trying to work what, out... You thought he was amazing? I, I thought... <laughs> no, I, I thought... thought uh, he couldn't even fucking live sync convincingly. I thought... He, what, I, he was terrible. Have you, have you watched the different versions? Because the version I watched, I was like, how did they do this? Because it was so bang on. <laughs> the, 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 the voice was... I couldn't figure... Dude, out. he's terrible. No, he's. A, I think he's a decent actor. And you, I think... You're, that, that you're, you're, you're kidding. I, I was literally pondering whether they'd used some sort of post-production technique to mangle his voice or whether he was or someone had sort of dubbed it over because it was so bang on it wasn't bang on you must have watched it, a, no, it a was, funny it was not bang on on at least four occasions he says words and he's not even it just doesn't sync up it's, it's like a bad martial arts film that's weird I, I mean I've made a note of that I was like it's so good that whatever technique they use they should just use it all the time because it was it, terrible I don't, I don't even think that he was dubbed I think that they just uh, used some sort of post production just, effect on just, I mean you don't think he was dubbed no I think they used some kind of post production technique to make with his voice because it's so bang on it's literally it's not bang on it's so bang it's on not. that's why I thought it was it's so impressive not bang on. They can't, no, it's no one can dub that well but, that's but, but it's not because it's, it's, it's not dubbed very well at all I, I can't this is so there's, weird there's three in, there's, there is at least three instances where it's completely you know there, there's something being spoken and he's he just doesn't the, the whole the sinking of the lips and what he's saying does not match up in the slightest. I thought it was too good to have been done. And he was terrible. You no, he was, he was a really good. good. He was really no, good. You think he was a good actor? Yeah, really good. I mean, a, a, an evil sort of demonic no, child. I was like, yeah, he, he was really he, good. He, he, he didn't pull it off at all. I, I thought like he must have been the director's son. Or a no, he son. was good. I mean, every, yeah. I mean, Tracy Scoggins was okay, but in comparison to everyone else in the film, I mean, most of the other actors could sort of conveyed... Emotions at random. The woman who played the the, the main the yeah, main she woman, was she was way better than she should have been. For yeah, this. that's true. But uh, um, all the other the, the bit part actors were just it, it seemed to be random what they were doing. Um, random emotions were displayed. I mean, what really struck me about this film was the editing is diabolical. Um, because every dialogue exchange in every scene is really awkward because it, it, it's cut to capture each person talking. So somebody will say something, yeah. cut. Someone will say something, cut. Some somebody will say it's so. It, it, this is the most basic illusion in cinema, trying to maintain the belief that there's actually a conversation happening, and they can't even mm. do that. It's look, this suffers very badly. The, 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 the editing is shoddy. It, it, the, the, the script is completely haphazard. Yeah, it's it's got completely no money. I mean, and also just with where it could have been, where it could have saved it a bit, is you know with the Puppet Master films. You know, I've, I've only seen Puppet Master two, and funny enough, Puppet Master two is the film that's played like in the background the whole time. So in the security in the in the in the security guy's office, he's watching Puppet Master Two in the background. Um, is the design and and the thought that's gone into the Puppet Master characters is good? You've got like, have you seen the Puppet Master? Yeah, I've seen I've seen the I've seen, definitely seen the first one. Yeah. Okay, I've, I've seen the second one. So I don't need the same. I'm assuming the same puppet. They've the all. I mean, they, they've the all one. got. They've all got their different methods. Yeah, whereas... they've all got their. That's the way they kill people. Is different. So yeah. I mean, my favourite guy is, is like the. He's got massive arms. But he's got a really small head. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. He's awesome. I really like the the woman who pukes. Slugs on people. Okay, yeah. Really grim. Yeah, and but, like, you got the guy who burns 
everybody. Yeah, right. He has, but even the design, the design of it is, you know, they look they look good. Yeah. You know, the main leader of them, who's got the kind of the, the hair and the black hat on, who's kind of skeletal, yeah. he looks great. All of, I mean, apart from the clown is passable fair, the baby is terrible. Yeah, the vo- I mean, the voice of the baby is terrible. The kind of lines that the baby comes out with as well. Terrible. You're fucking up my makeup. Yeah, rubbish. It's a baby. Yeah, I know. Why yeah. the baby wearing yeah, fucking makeup? It's idiotic. <laughs> it is. Um, yeah, in the voice department, that person is never going to be giving Brad Dury for a run for his money. Yeah, that's true. Yet yeah, the cast look puzzled. They, they, they look they don't look, like what they yeah. want to do next. No, because I don't. I think he just. This is, I mean, this is. I mean, the, the lack of imagination is fucking shocking because the dolls either just stab people or they bite them. Yeah, it's quite, th- there's quite. It's quite. You know, it's, there's quite a nasty sort of. Do you know? There's a bit of a nastiness to it. I didn't think that, but I mean, nasty. There's the baby but, stabbing in the groin and stuff. It's a bit like. Oh, it's I mean, a bit. But it, the lack of imagination, like, have them do something else. I think this film would have been way better if they, it was called Little Hooligans and they were little football players <laughs> just headbutting and stabbing it <laughs> up because that's the method and you could get some okay, enjoyment. Drunk. <laughs> yeah, right. Drunk little football yeah. players. Rather than just. Do- yeah, just the same thing. There was Biting, nothing to stabbing. it. I mean, the bear was done really bad. I kind of smirked at the bear. Yeah, Because the, vo- the, no- the, vo- the voice of the noise that the bear was making. The clown um, face laughing now and again. Oh, was God. Just fucking yeah. Dumb. Yeah, that got, that got thing quick. Um, I mean, for, this is a classic example of this just having, just, just being so lazily constructed and things that have no narrative pur- purpose. You know, Miss July, for instance. Oh, yeah. You know, that could have been used as a kind of, you know, like a siren, you know, tempting him to like, you know, tempt somebody for boats to smash on the shores. That could have been done in quite a clever way to kind of lure him to somewhere or something. Yeah. It wasn't. She just popped up with no narrative purpose and all it was doing was there it was to, 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 to fill a TNA quote yeah, for the trailer yeah, right, exactly yeah I mean I was just I was really it, it's, it's a fucking it, this is a shit filled husk of a movie yeah it's fucking terrible I mean nothing works in it even there's little there's little images that you know are supposed to kind of chill you like there's these uh, little girls going around on tricycles oh my with god gas masks no, on. that was laughable was, yeah going around honking their bike horns I was yeah. like fuck off and then they all put it's like th- is that supposed to be fu- it's it was so, just was that meant to be creepy laughable. I mean it, it was just there going fucking hell we uh, I mean, let's get some chicks on tricycles with gas masks. Yeah, I mean, it's rubbish. just... This is, I mean, Lame. again, it's fucking boring more than anything else. Boring and cynical. There's no reason to watch this in this day and age. No. Actually, the, the stop... Go watch Child's Play and Rosemary's Baby. <laughs> <laughs> the stop... And actually, the first Puppet Master, from what I remember. Um, the, the stop motion of that little marching band. Oh, yeah. Movie, that was, I was yeah, like, no, that's that was, slick. That, that was the best bit. Really it, that, well no, done. That, that was my best bit. Yeah, weird. The, the, weird how the, that was... The drummer boy. I was yeah. like, fuck! <laughs> how does that he, works really well. How, how has he done so well and the rest of it's so sloppy? Yeah. Um, there's no well, reason to watch this movie. Sorry, go on. No, I was just going to just add, um, all of the shotguns and handguns in this movie have the force of a spud gun. When were people shot? Uh, well, uh, the, that's how the um, the clown jack-in-the-box gets Oh, whacked. of course, yeah, right. So okay. every gunshot, and also what will happen is when, when it's killing a top, it would always be in slow motion. Yeah, right. But literally the force of the, the you know the handgun or, or the shotguns w- would literally be like a spud gun being fired at a, <laughs> a weak pane <laughs> of plastic glass I didn't notice that yeah okay well I've got nothing more to say no 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 I mean mean, in in comparison to Dull Man at least shit happens in this film there are kills there's I mean that no I don't I take that back forget it (laughs) I'm I'm trying to well we'll get down to where we're going to go on the three way split after our next film yeah which is Dull Man versus Demonic Toys Judith Gray tag teams with Brick Bardo and his girlfriend Ginger to face off against the evil Demonic Toys for one final battle Dull Man versus Demonic Toys a cop from another world what's the matter I've never seen a cop before and a nurse shrunk by aliens. Just the thing to drive G.I. Joe insane. Will you get the hell out of here? Are teaming up with a big partner. She's a cop in trouble. For some deadly fun and games. Toys that come to life and kill people to help a demon from hell. Jesus Christ! Not quite, slut. You can go where those toys go. You, you're the perfect size to help me kick their butts. The entertainment, boy. <laughs> and this time, get the hell away from me! <laughs> they're picking on someone their own size. Gosh, guys, this is the best bachelor party a guy could ever ask for. <laughs> Tim Thomerson, Tracy Scoggins. And Melissa Bear. <laughs> Hot 
top goes the weasel. Doll Man versus the demonic toys. You'll love it. It's really going to tear you up. So, Doll Man versus the demonic toys, directed by Charles Band. What did you think? Uh, okay, well, I mean, if, if, if for nothing else, this film truly exhibits the fucking brass neck of Charles Band, because to call yourself the director of this film is rich for, uh, for several reasons. Primarily, this is 61 minutes on the nose, more or less, in total. The opening credits, the ridiculously elongated opening credits that's focused on a pair of sunglasses, that, they last for four minutes and 45 seconds, and the end credits I, I, thought, last... they're long, I thought they're the longest opening credits I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, sorry, I mean, it's definitely got to be... Yeah, for, I mean, almost five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> and the end credits are almost exactly the same amount, even yeah. to the second. And also, there is an. This is basically just footage from yeah, the yeah, previous yeah. I, two I, films. I, I got this feeling of creeping dread. Uh, just as the opening credits closed, I thought, I wonder if they're just going to put loads of footage from the last two films. films. Yeah. I would say 35%. 40% is footage I mean, from the previous film. Shocking. I mean, and, and, he, and it's directed by Charles Band and the other two directors also, Pyun and uh, uh, Manukian. Yeah. I mean, this, I, I, this is the least amount of notes I have uh, <laughs> uh, written for a film to be covered on this show. Um, I've got a couple of bits. I mean, again, you know, the last time a, a, a guy bleeding fell into some light and that's some of the demonic toys here, a tramp bleeds on the floor and then, boom, the, the dolls are back. Yeah. Um, and Tracy Scoggins happens to be in this apparently different warehouse... Uh, because she had a hunch and she's on suspension, man. And I was like, come the <laughs> fuck on. I mean, th- they could. I mean, I don't, they, if this would have been so much more interesting if they just fucking improvised it because it's barely. It's not even. I would have much rather they just improvised yeah, it. Yeah, really, big time. Um, I mean, th- this this film is not interested in story or characterization nothing, nothing, or no. atmosphere. There's no there's no kills. Uh, Tracy Scoggins gets killed. Oh, that's it. Yeah. One kill. But that's a really a real quick. She gets dealt with quick. Oh, I mean, the fucking that that. I mean, to be honest, the, I did like the just the design of that GI Joe guy. He he chucks his knife in the plug, you know, and gets frazzled. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, for, I mean, <laughs> two two pretty forgetful kills, yeah, I mean, right? It's, it, it's, um, and then this is three films. Let's not forget this. This is Bad Channels, Demonic Toys, yeah, Bad Channels, yeah. and Doll Man, right? Um, I, I read about this um, online. That um, Ginger, it, this makes no sense, right? Because apparently, in the film Bad Channels, Ginger is not actually shrunk down. It's one of the other girls who shrunk down to size. But obviously, she did not want to fucking go Anywhere, near yeah, Charles yeah. Band with a barge pole. Yeah. So then it fell. It fell to Ginger. Um, I mean, this is tacky, low rent. It really is. It's a it's a sack of shit. This film. It's a con job again. It, it's I mean, a complete it, con. It's he, not I mean, he is. He's a he's a fucking. He's one cheap, but he's just just making this for money. There's, yeah, there's it's, 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 these are cons. I mean, because they're they're selling you something that doesn't exist. Because you're like, where's this story I was told was going to take place? Where, where is this film that I was sold? Um, I mean, wait, I mean for, for, you know, like they've they've chucked in this woman who apparently I didn't realise it wasn't the same character who'd been shrunk down. I thought it was a no, character who was shrunk no. down by an alien. But yeah. when she appears on a sort of uh, 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 kitchen, kitchen counter, workshop. I thought yeah. they're going to make the most of that set, aren't they? Yeah. So I reckon twenty percent of the film is just them sitting on that fucking. But, but all my, all my, when you first when you first see her on that top kitchen, you, you're just watching her for like yeah, six minutes. Yeah, like, man, what the fuck? <laughs> you can just watch her walking around scantily clad. You yeah. can't, she's not even zoomed in properly. I know. Oh my god. I mean, it's fucking. Th- There's no it, chemistry between Rick, Rick Brad and her either. Also, I felt that a bit uncomfortable that he's just some old high high trouser wasted. <laughs> White-haired granddad yeah, right. lusting after this like twenty-year-old, like you know. Stomach. Yeah, I know it's dodgy. Um, um, I, well, it's just a shambolic. It's just a shambles. This film is a shambles. It's. I mean, it's appalling to be honest. Um, there are a couple of moments where I was just like, "What the hell?" I felt like I was. It was. It, 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 there are moments of such colossal shittiness that I kind of felt like I was watching a dream or something. This makes Slugs look like Citizen Kane. You reckon Slugs is... Be- <laughs> I'd rather watch Slugs than Demonic Toys vs. Dollman. Oh, I don't know about that. I, I mean... I do. This is one of the... I, know, I, could, I, could, I could not sit down and watch this again. And also, I just it, it angered me more than Slugs. Slugs, I was like, fuck it now, I'm watching a bloody... I'm watching some cheap Spanish TV melodrama. Yeah. Um, this is just... Really reprehensible yeah. in, in terms of it's taking these kind of brands. Oh my, and also as well, it's like you know, it's got loads of characters here, but it doesn't do anything interesting with any of them. You know, the conceit of having two franchises face off against each other—not yeah. that those franchises were any good in the first place—is no. 
well, surely they're going to be quite creative in terms of having, you know, these very small characters in a very big world. Mm. There's stuff to do. I mean, fucking Land of the Giants did, what, six series on television yeah, right. of, a con- of the whole premise of very, very small people in a big world. Yeah, right. Um, it's completely without imagination uh, or merit, this and film. It's, it, I mean, it's, it's shockingly poorly made. I mean, there's random wipe edits and, like, mid-scene fade-outs, yeah, and I'm like, yeah, what yeah, the yeah, fuck yeah. is... Yeah. Who made this shit? Well, exactly. Well, the thing is, he's not paid anybody. He's probably just got some young guy. Do you want some experience at uh, um, at Moon... Full Moon. Uh, Do you want some experience at Full Moon Pictures and just cut my film? Yeah. Because he's doing everything on the cheap. Although, I don't know. He probably conned somebody into making that set. Didn't he do the music himself as well? I think he composed the music, didn't he, Charles? It it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, to be honest, did you... Got his next one neighbour to 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 do costumes? Got his like mother's friends to do. I mean, I, I, I imagine this whole thing is just like he just he's just people for favors. He's just doing stuff in the film. Yeah, right. I know. What you mean. I mean, the, the thing is, I, I, the, these films, all of them, feel like cynical, really things. And I, like you, I was very fucking irritated yeah. by them because they are they're selling something that doesn't exist. There's, have you ever heard of Video Zone? Video Zone. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. when these movies came out. Charles Band used to make a little video behind the scenes magazine on the end of the VHS. So you'd watch like demonic toys, right. and there'd be like a a little feature. He, yeah, here's a few trailers for right. other okay. full moon stuff coming. Yeah, and yeah. then uh, the one that was on the Dollman versus Demonic Toys uh, video is on YouTube in its entirety. Have you seen it? Yeah, I watched it. How long is it? Uh, it's probably about twenty minutes. Um, but you see Charles Band, and like I, I was reminded of Ed Wood. When I say Ed Wood, I mean Johnny Depp's portrayal of Ed Wood, because he seems like he just thinks everything's cool, and he. I mean, because you expect someone to be a horrible, cynical. I mean, he's quite, he's quite amiable. Yeah, you're like, oh, you know what? This kind of makes <laughs> it. Okay. It doesn't. Because you, it, these seems so cynically made. Like we're going to try and get you to pay money for this, even though it's fucking. Oh yeah. But he seems like he just is kind of enamoured by the whole process. And mm. I don't know, I mean, there's a Tim Thomason interview where he is trying to, you know, sell the film. And he's like, oh, it's, I mean, it's just good entertainment. And he's not a good enough actor to pull that off because you can tell he doesn't think for a fucking second that any of these movies constitute good entertainment. Yeah. Um, so that kind of made them feel a little less horrible yeah. in my mind. But they're, all, all three of these films are fucking absolutely terrible, meritless. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, I, I know I know which one I think is the best of the three. Yeah. And I know it isn't the one that you think is the best of the three. You can't think that this is the best of the three. You, can't, the, think it, you can't think this is the best of the three. It's the fucking shortest. It's 61, oh, no, no. It's 61 it's, minutes it's long. The short, it's the shortest of the three. Yeah. This annoyed me the most. I mean, I mean, whether it was a slow build-up of every film, I just felt myself getting more and more annoyed. I watched them all in very quick succession. Uh, like over two days, I and by the time it was into this, I was like, "I am never going near." It's I, it's like I fucking said on a previous show. I imagine Charles Band with a brown wax stamp of stinking shit every time he plummets it down on a movie. And I was for this. It was like I'm, it was so cheap and so cynical, and it recycled two films that were shit in the first place. Yeah, I know, but that kind of makes it a slightly more interesting because those films. Uh, this, this, this renders them more interesting. And, and of all, you know, of all the films, of all of all these three films, I've certainly never seen a giant human-sized baby trying to rape a shrunken woman. Of all this, And I was just watching, like, what the oh, fuck, fuck yeah, is going yeah, on? Yeah. And what am I watching? That's about as... Good as it gets. <laughs> you can't win here, because yeah. these, these, are, these are diabolically poor films. Um, everything that you can possibly derive pleasure from in a movie is not in any of these films. No. There's, no, there's no one to root for. All, all the characters are completely throwaway and two-dimensional. No, no, even fucking one-dimensional. There's no game. They're one-dimensional. There's no invention. The, um, they're badly the made. The script's terrible. Yeah. The acting's terrible. It's all bad. The editing's terrible. It's all bad. It, it, there's, no, there's, no, there's nothing redeeming about... It, these three, these three movies. I can't. Yeah, I mean, I, it's almost like I can't differentiate. They, they were all so shit. That none, none, none of them have kind of stuck their head over the parapet to actually be like, oh, actually, it had that. That was pretty cool. Uh, well, to be honest, the Dollman versus Demonic Souls was so shit and so short. And at, at this point, I think the most valuable thing you can have is if you were if you were listening to this, it's brevity. Go, yeah, <laughs> that's it. The le- I mean, the le- if you if you if you want to watch one of these films, watch the watch the movie movie. One and get the fuck out. <laughs> and at least uh, I think probably the, the the best footage from both films is in the third. So I mean, I just fuck. don't watch uh, any of these yeah. films. I wouldn't even bother wasting your time watching the trailers. But if you have to watch one of these, <laughs> I, I reckon it's done my best as demonic toy. Fuck. I mean, that's it, it, it's it, you know it, it's quite a solid argument. 
because of his, <laughs> what were you going to go? What, what, were you, what were you inclined to go for? I had to go to Demonic Toys Over Doll Man. Really? I had to go to Demonic Toys Over Doll Man. I don't even know. I got so. Bo- I mean, I got so. Bo- I mean, Doll Man was so boring. Yeah. It was so boring. But so was Demonic yeah, but Toys. Least, but at least there was action. At least there were toys killing people. Yeah, I mean, that. That's you know, there was not any action in Doll Man. Yeah. It's just like an inept, inept gang having loads of conversations with each other. Yeah, I mean. You know? Lots of conversations that were really poorly drawn out. That's terrible. You know? I mean, the, all of these films are awful. I feel like I've got PTSD after watching yeah. it. <laughs> but uh, I have to say, I mean, the most important thing is that you get in and get out as quickly as possible, so yeah. the third one's the best. Yeah. And it takes all of the decent yeah, footage, yeah, 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 if yeah. there is any, yeah. from the first two yeah. films. Yeah, less is more. Um, <laughs> and then some, yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I'll, 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 go, I'll go with the Demonic Toys versus Dull Man. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Good, it's the only way to go as far, as far as I'm concerned. The lesser of three evils. Yeah, exactly right. Right, thanks very much for listening. Uh, we'll be back um, in a few weeks with another episode. Um, you can uh, get your Twitter, your Facebook on. All of the episodes are cut to video on our YouTube channel. Uh, we'd love to hear what you think. If you've seen any of the films that we've talked about, then, then holler at us. And also, uh, suggestions for future episodes are always gladly accepted. Uh, see you soon. Take it easy. Shabless! Waiting for something to set me free. (laughs) Your friend's blood did the trick. You see, in order for me to take on a human form, I have to be born like a human. At the moment of birth, I ride shotgun down the old birth canal, and I come out instead, Judith. Or should I call you mom? What the hell are you talking about? You know. Have you forgotten so soon?